Good evening, everybody. Thank you all for joining us. We praise God for your participation in this worship service. Today begins the 28 days of prayer and Bible study. 28 days of prayer and Bible study in which we will go over the 28 fundamental beliefs. Today, our sister Waverly Miners will be leading us in our Bible study. Just before doing that, please allow me to share a few bits of information that might be pertinent to everybody. Number one is that we are streaming live on YouTube. If you go to our church's YouTube, you will find, you will find that we are streaming. Maybe some people cannot join us on Zoom. That's understandable. Share with them this link. Uh, as soon as possible, I will place the link up on Facebook. I'm unable to do it from here. Something about my laptop doesn't have enough, uh, doesn't have enough RAM or something to broadcast both on our YouTube, Zoom, and Facebook platforms. But nonetheless, please let people know that we are on live. We are live on YouTube. Uh, the other thing is you will notice that you cannot turn on your microphones, and that is purposeful. Uh, this uh, is a sermon at which time, at once the sermon is over, I will turn on the microphones for any questions. Now, the question portion of it, the open mic portion of it, will not be accessible online. It will only be accessible through Zoom. Also, if you look at your, uh, if you look down, down at the bottom of your screens, It'll say polls, polls. Now, um, I have five questions, five Bible questions. Uh, you can, you can, you may answer the Bible questions. They're kind of tongue and cheek uh, Bible questions, I, but they are meant for your, uh, for your reflection and your study. Uh, that is what they are meant there for. Why don't we uh, now take the time to read our opening scripture. Every single night we will have a different one. This one is found in John chapter five, verse 39. John chapter five, verse 39. The Bible says, search the scriptures for in them you think ye have eternal life and they are which testify of me. And that is what we intend to do for each one of these 28 nights to search the scriptures and discover the will of God for our lives. Would you join me now in a, a word of prayer? Father God, thank you for the opportunity that you give to us to study your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity that you have given to each and every single one of us so we can know your will better. Now, Father, we pray for our speaker this evening. Uh, Sister Miners, we know, Father, that you have imbued her with the words that she should speak today. We pray, Father, that we have a receptive ear to hear what the Spirit would have us to know. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Sister Miners, the floor amen. is yours. Amen. 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 I want to say good evening to each and every one of you. It's such an awesome task and opportunity, and I just thank the pastor for starting this 28 fundamental beliefs of what Seventh-day Adventists believe. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will indeed guide us and direct us as we go through this, this talk, sharing of the first fundamental belief. Let us pray. Father, again, in your son's precious name, we ask for the Holy Spirit to surround us this day this evening. We pray for your truth to guide us, to empower us, to and to administer through us in your son's name, Father, I pray. I ask that you would open the ears and the hearts of your people, Lord, that your will be accomplished this evening. Guide me, direct me, Father, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Uh, the first fundamental truth that the Seventh-day Adventists believe is the following, and I will read it in your hearing. And it's entitled, The Holy Scriptures. 
the Holy Scriptures, Old and New Testaments, are the written word of God given by divine inspiration. The inspired authors spoke and wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. In this word, God has committed, committed to humanity the knowledge necessary for salvation. The Holy Scriptures are the supreme, authoritative, and the infallible revelation of his will. They are the standard of character, the test of experience, the definitive revealer of doctrines, and the trustworthy record of God's acts in history. Now let's break that down. The Holy Scriptures, Old and New Testaments are the written word of God. This is what we believe. In the Old Testament, there are 39 books written before the birth of Christ. These 39 books are from Genesis to Malachi. Genesis in Greek means origin, source, generation, and the original Hebrew word, Barashit, means the beginning. These were written by Moses. Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, means my messenger. Malachi, who wrote it a prophet, ends the Old Testament with a message of judgment. In the New Testament, there are 27 books, beginning with Matthew. Kata, Matharian, meaning according to Matthew. Matthew wrote about Jesus as a Jew and as Jesus being king of the Jews. The Old Testament, sorry, the New Testament ends with the revelation of Jesus Christ. We often may hear the book being referred to as Revelations. That's an error. However, the book is known as the Book of Consummation. The Book of Revelation speaks to the divine program of redemption, and God's name is vindicated in that book. The Book of Revelation is the most prophetic book in the Bible and is also known as the Apocalypse, meaning unveiling, disclosure, or revelation of Jesus Christ. This book unveils things that were otherwise unknown. It speaks to one revelation, that being of Jesus Christ. With a book that has a beginning and an ending, as I've said, we are anxious to see what is in between. However, the truth of the matter is that this Bible has so much in it that as we study the contents, we will always find more to understand, more to live by, and more to share. And some, for some, even more to question. That is why I believe it is the most sold, the most read, and the most studied book of its time. This book, however, has not been without controversy. Some do not believe it is true. In fact, some even seek to destroy it. Others have printed it, defended it, smuggled it, translated, translated it, sold it, distributed it, read it, studied it, preached from it, and still there are those who have not even yet heard about it. However, in Romans 1.20, it is stated that for since the creation of this world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. So that's saying whether they've seen it, whether they haven't seen it, nature speaks to the truth of the word of God. So let's continue with belief, with scriptures to endorse what we believe. In John 17, 17, 
I'll read, I'll read this, the uh, belief again. The Holy Scriptures, Old and New Testament, are the written word of God given by divine inspiration. The inspired authors spoke and wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. In this word, God has committed to humanity the knowledge necessary for salvation. The Holy Scriptures are supreme, authoritative, and the infallible revelation of his will. They are the standard of character, the test of experience, the definitive revealer of doctrines, and the trustworthy record of God's acts in history. In John 17, 17, it says, sanctify them by the truth. And we say, its word says, your word is truth. People have given their lives for this word. People have read it and believed it. And when challenged because of it, they have not recanted and many have been martyred because of it. Your word is given by divine inspiration. In 1 Thessalonians 2.13, it says, and we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but it actually is, but as it actually is the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. It takes one to believe God's word, to get the full truth out of it. Who has had an experience of reading God's word before becoming a Christian? and then reading God's word after becoming a Christian and having a totally different experience. So we know that when we believe in God, when we believe his word, when we read his word, when we study his word, his word speaks to our heart. His word resonates in our own spirit. His word is true. The inspired author spoke and wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21, it reads, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. 21, for prophecy never had its origin in the human will. But prophets through human spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So we know that the Holy Spirit has a lot to do with the word of God, with the truth of God's word. And as we study it and read it and believe it and trust in it, God's word, as I said, resonates in our spirit and drives us and carries us. Our belief goes on to say, in this word, God has committed to humanity the knowledge necessary for salvation. Psalm 119 verse 105 states, we all know this scripture and I'm sure for some, this scripture is one of their favorites. It says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. How many of us want and need direction in our lives? I constantly ask God to order my steps. Proverbs 16, 9, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. And I pray not just for my steps to be ordered by the Lord, but my family's and my friend's steps to be ordered by the Lord as well. It is a lovely thing to know that there is a supreme being watching over us and leading us for our good. I trust God to lead me. I trust him to guide me. I trust him to direct me because he is one who cares for each and every one of us. 
And I'm sure this is something that you want for yourself as well. The Holy Scriptures are the supreme, authoritative, and the infallible revelation of his will. In Proverbs 30, 5 and 6, it states, Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. God admonishes us, do not add to his words or he will rebuke you and prove you a liar. Let's just trust the word of God to be true. Trust it to be what God wants it to be and for it to do what God wants it to do. The standard is the standard of character. The belief is the standard of character. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. God tells us what his word is, what it does and what he wants it to do. I'm gonna read that one again. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God, those who believe in God, or those who want to be his servant may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. How powerful is that, I say? To know that as we teach God's word, his word has power behind it. For a parent, especially for a mother, we know that when fathers speak to our children in a stern way, it carries much more weight than in most cases our words. So, especially if our female voices, our female voices are usually lighter and the male voices is usually a little heavier. Children have a tendency to listen to that stern male voice more often. So we know by that example that our heavenly father's voice and word is much more powerful. And I say, praise the Lord for that. His word is so powerful. We, we receive it. We uh, encourage it. We trust it. And I'm sure we feel it in our spirits when we believe his word. We believe the Holy Spirit scriptures as the test of experience. In Isaiah 8, chapter 8, verse 20, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, it states, consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. The scriptures are the definitive revealer of doctrines. In Hebrews, Chapter four, verse 12, it says, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. God's word judges us. God's word test us. God's word heals us. It does such a work in us that I want to say, how can we not believe? But we know that there are some who do not believe. But when God's word, when we allow the spirit of God to resonate in our spirit, when we yearn to know who God is, when we have the desire to know God, he meets us. And it's important too, the importance of prayer. Prayer is so important, not only for ourselves, but for us to pray for others. I was speaking with my daughter-in-law, we were sharing this afternoon. And she was saying about the importance of praying for others who may not even know that there is a God, who may not even know that they have a need to know God. 
as we pray for them, God hears our words as we receive him as our own personal savior. He hears our words when we cry out to him. And when we cry out on behalf of someone else, the Holy Spirit draws them to God. The Holy Spirit uh, beckons them to God. The Holy Spirit gives them even a desire to know God because sometimes people may not have a desire to know God. So as we pray for them, we pray that they will have a desire to know God. We pray that they would have a desire to read his word. We pray that they would have a desire to understand it. And many people, even as they may not believe the truth of God's word, as they seek to find out or even to debunk the word of God, they come to that place and recognize God's word is true. In studying, I've come across many people who have, have said that they didn't believe and they studied the scripture in order to, to um, speak to Christians or argue with Christians about thinking that the word of God is not true. And as they study it for themselves, they recognize that God's word is true and that it has power and that God's word, God's word can even defend itself. But God loves when we come and study it for ourselves. And as I stated earlier, there's so much in the word of God that we can't even fathom the amount of wisdom and knowledge and understanding in God's word. Uh, the Proverbs have so much uh, wisdom in it. The Psalms has so much healing in it. Uh, God's word is there for our, its, its testimony uh, to prove that it's true. We build a doctrine on God's word that is powerful. In closing, this, in this belief it is stated, and the trustworthy record of God's act in history. We believe the truth of God's act in history. God's uh, word, there's a, there's a bloodline running through the word of God. From, from Genesis to Revelation, there is a bloodline running. In Romans 15, 4, it states, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they we provide, we might have hope. And the scriptures give us hope and encouragement that as we wait, pray patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. We are waiting for all of God's promises to be fulfilled. We say hallelujah because we know that God's word is true. We know that God's word is real. We know that God has kept his word as we put his word to the test. I think of Gideon, he put God's word to the test. He asked God to, in different, different scenarios, when God called him to be a servant for him, Gideon put God's word to the test. He said, God, if it's you calling me, I want this fleece that I put out there to be wet on the top. God made it wet on the top. He put it out there again. Lord, I just want it to be wet on the bottom. He made it wet. Gideon tested God's word and God encourages us to test his word. He encourages us to seek his will for ourselves. He wants us to know that his word is true. He's given us many examples as we examples as we read through the word. He's given, he's, he wants us to believe. He wants us to trust. He wants us to understand that his word is true. In the 11 of that last scripture I spoke, I spoke, it says, these things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. We believe that God's word is true. We believe it is truth. We believe it has truth and we love it. We love God's word. We trust it. We believe it. We pray the Holy Spirit to continue to reveal it to us. 
because his word is true. All the above scriptures that we were spoken were from the New International Version. I ask that the Holy Spirit, that God will please help us to learn to love your holy scriptures. Father, please help us to hide your word in our hearts. Father, please help us to speak your word. Help us to pray your word. And please help us, Lord, to experience your word in our lives. In your son Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I spoke earlier about there being a red line through the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. There's a young man that I saw online. His name is Aaron Larry Matibi. He's from the Rainbow Christian School. I've asked Pastor if he could possibly play that for us. And let's listen to the words that he speak, speaks. He speaks about the line, the bloodline going from Genesis to Revelation. Let's listen to this young man as he blesses our heart. Sister Miners, I, I'm, I have to apologize. Unfortunately, I was unable to find that video online on YouTube. I just have the video. I do not have the YouTube I, page. I can, I can play it from here. Oh, you can share your screen. So. I, well, I have it on my phone, so let's just see. I, I have it too. It's not really going to come up. Well, what we can do is we can show it uh, tomorrow if you would like, but it's not on YouTube. I can't find it on YouTube. If you could send it to me, the link via YouTube, I'll be happy to do that. Um, okay. Let's see. But in the meantime, uh, we are going to let everybody know about our service tomorrow. We will begin promptly at 7 p.m. again. Our message will be the Trinity. That will be our message. The Trinity at 7 p.m. And yours truly appears to be the one with that one in his, uh, in his wheelhouse. We encourage everybody to, who can to please come on, you, uh, come on our Zoom page now. Though the individuals who are watching us on YouTube, please come on to Zoom now. It's, uh, we have a few minutes left for questions and answers, anything. Yeah. And uh, we just do ask that you turn on your screen and you turn on your microphone, please. Uh, but that portion will not be available on YouTube. God's right. continued graces and mercy. Sister Miners, would you close this session out with prayer? Okay. Can I do this from my phone? It's not going to come out. Okay. Wrong. All right. So, yes, I invite anyone to share their own personal experience about uh, how the God's word has touched their heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your grace, your peace, your joy. Father, we thank you for your word that you have sent to us. It's a love letter to us, Father. I pray, Lord, that you'll continue to uh, encourage our hearts to read your word and to have a love of reading your word, Father, to finding out uh, the truth of your word, to finding out uh, what's happened in the past, what's happening in the present, and Lord, even more important, what's going to happen in the future. So, Father, I ask that you do a new thing in each of us, oh God. Let these words be an encouragement to those who hear to study your word, to hide it in our hearts, Father, to speak it, to understand it, and to share it. Again, Lord, we just thank you for your love. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, all that you've done for us, oh God, all that you're doing. Guide us and direct us, Father. And yes, please order our steps. In your name I pray. Amen. You're muted. You're muted, Pastor. Folks on YouTube, 